Hello everyone, welcome to today's live stream. Today we're going to cover Bonsai, which is a visual reactive programming language. Uh, it's a bit hard to describe what it does because it does a lot of things, uh, but I have uh, two very talented people here with me today to explain uh, a little bit more of what it does exactly and uh, the potential of it. And you can also ask questions on the chat. So uh, I'm going to do, do you a very quick overview of what Bonsai is. You can go to this webpage, bonsai-rx.org. Uh, and uh, you can see some examples of what it does. It was used for, for example, uh, tracking uh, mouse paths or when they were going through mazes, see what paths they would take and do like analysis on the data and that kind of stuff. You can also use it with some sensors and uh, use it to like trigger stuff uh, of different sorts. Uh, you can use it with all sorts of devices, so it's very comprehensive. It's uh, built on top of C Sharp using uh, the .NET modules and uh, it's very modular and uh, it's a uh, slightly different node-based approach um, uh, but I'll, I'll let uh, the guys that I have with me today explain that uh, a little bit better so I'm gonna switch this screen to Discord hopefully we'll have this uh, on screen oh, here so I have with me Gonzalo Lopes which was the creator of uh, the tool should probably have the desktop audio on. And I have with me Juan Frazão, which was like a strong collaborator of uh, Gonzalo Hi. during, during this development process. And he's also like an evang evangelist of the tool uh, itself. So uh, I guess Juan Frazão will be the main speaker of the seminar, but uh, Gonzalo will help out in, in uh, a few parts yeah. and uh, clarify some things. Yeah. So uh, first of all, thank you both so much for, for joining, João and Gonzalo. It's a pleasure to have you here. I know Bonsai for quite a few years through the works that I did in Arctic and stuff, but it has so much potential for interactive stuff that I think it's it's great for demo scene people to uh, to understand a little bit more of how this works and how they can use this tool for other stuff, not just creating audiovisual stuff, but you know for interactivity and data processing and that kind of stuff. So without further ado, please uh, take it away, for example. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, are you on the presentation? Um, uh, yeah, I'm switching to it now. Yeah, okay. So, thank you for the kind introduction. My name is Jean Fazão. I work as a researcher in Champalimau Foundation. So, I'm presenting Bonsai. Bonsai is a visual language for scientific experimentation. It's developed by Gonçalo Lopes and maintained by him. I help a little bit when, when I can. Uh, and so, so Bonsai was developed to to, uh, to acquire data and control devices uh, for scientific experimentation. So in here we have an example of with the zebrafish larva. This is a study on on social interaction. You can see the two fish on the on the bottom left. Uh, they are interacting with with more with with, with in, in in some parts of 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 the scene and you can see it also on on the on the top uh, right um and so bonsai is used the, for acquiring data on this setup and for tracking the fish um uh, but it can also work to control um uh, the experiment. So in this other experiment, Bonsai is, is showing what it, this is a projected image, like this white circle that is here, it's by a projector. And uh, there's a camera that is uh, catching the, the animal. And Bonsai is analyzing the, the position of the animal. And whenever the animal touches the light, uh, that happens when, when, when some going to happen soon uh, then the animal can uh, uh, drink water on 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 that uh, uh, part that you see it uh, down um, let me see see if the video comes again um, so yeah so you see the animal catches the light and then it can drink water and so in bonsai here is not only like controlling the visual stimulus is also playing the tone and is also opening like a valve for for giving uh, the water reward um and uh, last in this example 
uh, will say is being used for visualization of a huge data set of uh, neuronal data. This is data taken from, from a brain and that was arranged in a, in a special way. And Bonsai is being used for displaying that data uh, in, in, in a virtual reality headset. Um, and so the main motivations for Bonsai to be developed was that seldom in these scientific experimentations you have like uh, uh, a bunch of different uh, hardware that is uh, producing data and everything is, is happening kind of asynchronously um, and you have like different time scales and you want to acquire that data in a, in an easy way also in an independent way and in a way that it's also uh, lightweight for, for, for the way that you use, uh, use your computer resources. Um, and so, uh, for instance, like in a lot of these uh, experiments, you are acquiring data from cameras, you, from uh, scientific uh, boards, uh, like uh, voltage uh, signals that can come from different kinds of sensors. Uh, both sides also as models for the Arduino, can show and, and acquiring data from uh, from several sources like uh, 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 neuronal data from from uh, boards for acquiring uh, physiological data, uh, also from uh, game controllers, and is also able to show um, stimulus like images or or sounds. Um, with different devices, also is able to output for motors and, and other types of uh, hardware. Um, uh, so this is the interface of Monsai. I'm going to, to show now uh, uh, an, uh, an example. Um, so, so this is the, the interface from Monsai. In this middle part, you write your program. And so you can write and you can go pick uh, notes from um, from the toolbox, consign notes from the toolbox that you have there on the on the on the left side. So for instance, we can we can go pick a, a source node, uh, like a vision. Uh, yeah. Like the camera capture node. And if we double click it, it's going to appear here on this middle middle part. That is where you are writing your program. Uh, and then here on the on the right side, you can you can have um, you have the properties of the node. When you select the node, you have the properties in the, and and you can change the like, properties of that node. This, in this case, I'm going to change the index of the camera because I have two cameras and. And then what I can do is that I can press play in, in there. There's a, a play thing. And when I press play, the program that it's uh, written in here, it's compiled and it's, and it's, put, in, uh, and it's put it to run. Uh, and now it's running. I can stop it. Uh, but then what I can do is that I can double click on the node and I can see uh, what, uh, what, what is the output of the node, OK? And so in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this camera and then I'm going to pick another node. I'm going to stop and then I'm going to pick another node. If I if I pick, I can pick a nodes from the toolbox in, in, in different ways. I can go there and look. So there are sources, transform, syncs, combinators, uh, nodes that I will explain a little bit further in, in, in this presentation. But I can also pick them by, by their name. And for instance, I want a threshold known, known uh, threshold vision node. And so if I write it, if I write the name of the node on the on, on this uh, field on the on the search field on, of the toolbox, uh, I can I can then pick it up from there. And if I have it the one on the right that is selected. If I double click it, it automatically it, it, it gets connected to the one that was selected on the workflow. And now what I can do is that I can put this working again. And now I have a threshold in here. Okay, uh, uh, and so I can I can change some properties on on the on the property grid here on the on the right side, like the the, the amount of the of the threshold that I want to apply to, to, to the image, I can change it here. 
Um, and so, but what I can also do is that I can, for instance, I can I can um, externalize this um, this property of uh, that it's here on the right. I can externalize for the the threshold value uh, so that I'm able to control it uh, with uh, another bonsai node. And what I'm going to to do now is that I'm going to um, to control it by for instance, with audio. With uh, so, I'm I'm going to capture from audio. And I have another audio source here. So the green nodes here uh, are are sources, are sources of of data. And um, and if I press play now, what? And I double click on the audio capture. Uh, you are going to see that uh, when I speak. You have you have the waveform in there, and if I get quiet, I don't see it. Okay, so now I have this waveform, and if I want to connect uh, this waveform to the to the bonsai, so it's centered on zero. What I want to do is first I want it to to transform it to absolute values, uh, and now I want to average it. Uh, so I get another another signal that it's more like connected to the volume of the it's not the waveform but now it's the volume of the sound that total power of the, of the sound and what I can do after is that I can I can rescale it I can rescale it. Oops. Okay. So I need to adapt it. So uh, I can rescale it to a range that I, I know that is going to work. So if we see it here, for instance, I can see here on the average uh, on the average uh, window, inspector window, I can see that um, the maximum of sound is around two to uh, nine nine thousand. So if here on the um, on rescale. I put the maximum 9,000, and also know that this threshold varies in between 0 and 255. So if I write here 255, then I can connect it. Uh, I need to stop this. I can connect this to there. And now you are going to see that my image, the image changes as, as I, I speak. Um, OK. So this is the this is the first demo, and um, then I will talk. I will do a, 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 I will expand a little bit more this demo with the, no. I can expand it right now. So as I said, there are several um, there are several um, nodes in here, and we have several families of of stuff that uh, that Arduino that um, bonsai includes. So we have, for instance, audio. Uh, we have uh, digital signal processing. Uh, there's some stuff from custom um, generic hardware for scientific experimentation, uh, models for numerics and, and, and uh, video that were already used. And one of the ones that we also have is, uh, is a model for, for uh, the Arduino. And, um, and so, um, can you show the image? Uh, ah, no, I have the, the camera. If I start this, okay. So I have Arduino in here, uh, and and uh, connected to the Arduino, I have this uh, this servo motor. Okay, and uh, I'm going to connect the Arduino to the computer, and I've put the program on the Arduino that is called like Firmata, and this standard Firmata. Uh, and thing that you need to know is that this uh, servo motor is connected to to pin seven on the Arduino. And what I can do with this is that I can I can now uh, I can come back to my program and I can 
I can put the Arduino. I can I can check if I if you want to see everything from a family, you can write the name of the family, and it's going to show all nodes of that family. And so in here we have one node that it's called servo output for the Arduino, and I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to configure it with the um, with the COM port that I know and I hope it's six, and as I said, pin seven, and now I can connect a pin in here. So um, I can connect a value in there. And so the value that I want is uh, is another scale. It's a, it's a different scale because the, this servo is going to work in between 0 and 180. So what I can do is that I can select this node in here. And I can press the Alt key. And if I do that um, and select like the scale in there, or I copy this one. I'm going to use the copy because I want some values that are already there. So I'm going to copy this node and then I'm going to select that one. And if I press Alt key and I press paste, I'm going to have um, a branch. Uh, what I've done is a branch on, on the program. So it's a way to branch. And so now this value from, from this node is propagated to both scales. And now I can change the scale in here. So the input scale is the thing that I wanted to copy is already there. And now I'm going to change the output scale and I'm going to put 180 in here. And I'm going to connect this value to the to the servo output. Okay, now hopefully when I start this now, if everything work, works well, and it's not, ah, okay, it's working. So when I speak, you, you see that the, uh, uh, e That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, not a good singer. Um, so, okay, so this is a quick demo of the possibilities of bonsai. I don't know if there are uh, more questions uh, or if we have already questions. Uh, no um, questions on the chat yet. A lot of uh, compliments okay. on how, how compact okay. it looks. But, uh, but yeah, please proceed and I'll let you know if there's any specific questions. Okay. If you're hearing this so, on the chat, yeah. please feel free to post questions now or later. I'll note them down and ask later if it's more okay. appropriate. Yeah. So I've covered more or less the, the, the graphical inter user interface. You can you can go on, on the Bonsai uh, website uh, that it's uh, uh, here. Uh, maybe you can send the link or something like that. Uh, and you have like a more comprehensive and more detailed uh, explanation of all the of all the um, commands and ways of like shortcuts and and a lot of stuff that you have on the on the graphical user interface. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to try to explain a little bit better uh, how. So there's a lot of languages that are visual programming languages made by nodes. Uh, the, the particularity about Bonsai is that it's, it's built on top of reactive extensions of Microsoft. And, um, and um, we, have, uh, we have come to the realization that we should explain, like we have a metaphor for explaining the inner works of Bonsai because then people can understand a little bit better how to program on bonsai uh, because this is not so so the program that I, uh, that you write on, on on the workflow is a tree and it's really like a program that is compiled and you can and you can, can do a lot of stuff in there but you need to understand a little bit about what's 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 behind the the, the curtain uh, and so we have to have up like this uh, metaphor and so uh, what we need to imagine is that is each node in bonsai so it's Pick like the one of the source nodes. It's it's a Twitter account, for instance. It's like a Twitter account or a Facebook account. Uh, and the nodes that are connected to that node, it's because they are they they resisted on that node, uh, and so they are following the node. And the particularity that it's like uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's the best feature. It's it's the one of the features that I really enjoy about Pulsai, is that the nodes that register there. Uh, the, the later on, they are able to be notified whenever, like for instance, in this in this example, we have like Twitter account from NASA, and whenever NASA produces a, a, a tweet, 
uh, everyone that is uh, following uh, NASA uh, is going to, to be notified about that tweet. Okay, and so so in this in this metaphor, uh, so we have a webcam uh, that is a node, and the node, for instance, like the node that I put it there, the threshold, it's like registered on the on the on the webcam, and then whenever the webcam produces one image, uh, it notifies the the it pushes the image to the to the to the to the threshold node. And this is really like efficient because then everything is 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 very efficient because you are not pulling data. It's more like you are being uh, driven by the data. Um, but then, you, so another way to to look at this data is that there are se it's sequences of 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 items data, uh, and that you can observe that you can register to observe. But then you can do a lot of stuff. You can do a lot of manipulations because it's a, it's a sequence, so you can also cut it or you can replay it or you can register it uh, on, on it again. Um, and so, um, as I explained, uh, there are several types of, of nodes in bonsai. And one of the nodes that we already saw, uh, you saw almost all of them, but one of it's the ones that produces uh, uh, data, the ones that uh, uh, that um, and the ones that produce data are, uh, have this. Uh, they are green and have like this this little uh, thing in there, and um, and so a node registers on the other node. The Grayscale is registered on the camera capture, and in this diagram, what you can see is that there's a, a timeline for the, the camera capture that is producing like images. And what the grayscale node is doing is um, is transforming each image to uh, to um, to the to a grayscale version of the image, uh, and this is another another timeline that other nodes can con connect in there. Um, so these diagrams are called marble diagrams, and they are useful because then you can understand the, like more complex uh, nodes how do they operate. For instance, I'm going to explain uh, this small example. You have a camera. Uh, images from the camera are transformed to, to grayscale. So uh, transform nodes are nodes that don't change uh, the don't change the rate of the data. They don't drop data, but they can change the data. So so this this node doesn't. So it just changes the image to uh, black and white. But uh, if camera produces 100 image, grayscale is going to produce uh, also 100 image. Um, and then on this example, we have a sample node that it's a it's a combinator that can combine like several 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 nodes, uh, several streams, um, and uh, and you have another. Know that it's the key down that is producing like uh, whenever the user presses the key, is going to produce a, 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 a data. And then sample whenever it's a good is a special combinator uh, that uh, is going to sample images whenever you you press the key, uh, and then you have the the save image that it's. Um, 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 that is a sync that syncs the data to 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 a file, and so those are the the these are the the principal types of the, of the sync. And what I'm going to show now is uh, what does this look like in a in a in the in the marble diagram. And this is useful because as we if you go to to the um, to the for instance, to reactive extensions, and you go to see and their their documentation, you are going to find a lot of these nodes that are more complex, and then it's nice to know how how these um, how these marble diagrams are represented. And and so this is grayscale that I already explained, and now so it transforms color images to to black and white. And then you have this sample node. Okay, the key down is is the same thing as the as the camera captures. It produces like uh, keystroke events, right? 
and now we have the sample. So the sample is a node that is connected to two timelines. You see the, the two timelines in there. And then what happens is that whenever a key is pressed, it's going to pick the, the last, the last uh, um, item from the, the first connection. In this case, it's the grayscale. Okay? And so, and then it outputs it. it um, and you see here that it is going to pick the triangle one in this case. And there's a particularity that is this, this thing is that if for some, some, some thing the, the key down finishes, uh, when it finishes, it's going to also to, it's like a, a key stroke. It's like a, it's going to pick the, the, the last uh, one from the grayscale. So this is the termination. The sequence can terminate in, for some reason, you can close the, the stream. Um, and then you have the same the save image. The save image uh, doesn't. So it's uh, uh, what happens happens uh, outside of. Uh, so it's a it's a secondary uh, it's a side it's a side effect that he, so he receives an image. He saves it to the to the disk and just by. Um, to be easier to mount stuff in, in bonsai, uh, the output is the same thing as the input. It doesn't change the data. Um, and so, okay, so this is an example. And then there's also some special, uh, there's a, also another subtype of, of combinator that is condition uh, that can drop. Uh, so in this case, only items that are equal to, to A will pass to this connection. And so uh, only when you press the uh, A key, you are going to have a, a, a sample a sample, um, a sample from the, the, the camera capture. Um, and so I think this ends the, the explanation. So as a, as a reference, uh, you have the categories here. So this is the source, this is transform, this is combinator, uh, and there's a sync. So sources generate uh, data, event streams from devices or files, uh, either by can be anything. Uh, transform, they transform data without dropping like packets, like they don't drop data, and it's important. Uh, this this, this uh, definition that uh, transform doesn't drop data so that you can synchronize stuff together. And then there's the combinator. The combinators are concrete ways of... Um, so the combinator is a generic node that has more than, than one input and is able to combine data. But it's also... So there are a lot of different ways to 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 control the flow or to to synchronize like uh, those parallel inputs. So everything is happening at the same time and combinator is a way that you can specify exactly the way that you want to combine data that it's, that is coming from different sources at different frame rates with different uh, with different latencies and stuff. And then last we have the sync that it's uh, a node that um, doesn't imply nothing on the on the on the workflow. Uh, but it generates some kind of side effect. You can send data to the network, or you can send, uh, or you can save the data to some 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 file. Um, and then there are also nodes that you, some of them you already see. You've seen me externalizing like a property uh, from the threshold to be able to to use it in by another by another node. Um, you see that on the example, but then you can also um, group nodes uh, inside of, of nodes. So you can you can make nested uh, nested workflows. So you pick like a, 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 it's like functions. It's like making a, a function from a piece of code, right? And so you can you can pick your workflow and make it in a I/O order uh, function. Um, um, and so I'm going to give some examples of some of the of the nodes that we uh, that you can that you can that you can use. Uh, for instance, um, so that you can build your your programs, but you 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 can go to to bonsai documentation, or you can 
or you can find them in the bonsai toolbox or you can go to the reactive extensions and see the their documentation there so but i'm i'm just want to give you some ideas of 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 um, of nodes that you can use for for controlling uh, or programming in bonsai so one of them is skip uh, as a parameter uh, and so if you have a sequence the skip was going to do is going to skip the the, the first uh, uh, number of items specified by 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 the number that it's there uh, and if you have a skip you, you also have a take so take is going to take the first uh, items from uh, from the sequence and it's going to uh, and then is going to to finish the the, the sequence okay and this is mark of finishing the sequence. So this would be a way to finish your keyboard. You can put keyboard and then take, I'm going to take like uh, 10 keystrokes. Then I'll do take 10, for instance. Um, uh, and you have uh, others, you have last, you have, uh, there are several of these operators that cut uh, like the, 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 the streams. Um, and then this is an example of um, of um, a combinator. So you have the so this is another example. It's skip and you, and so it's like the the sample. So it, you you it's, it's a combinator. So it can it can be registered into 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 different uh, sources. And what it's going to do is going to skip all of the items from the first connected stream till uh, you have an element on the second stream. Uh, the element can be whatever you can, it can even be like, uh, like a new element, but, but yeah, can be, can come from, from any place. Uh, and is going to finish whenever the, the first sequence finishes. Uh, that it's uh, that you can see here on the on the on the termination thing when the first um, the first thing terminates uh, the the skip and is going to terminate also. This is important to not only understand what happens when when you have elements arriving to a to to a node, uh, but also what happens when the the elements where the node uh, the where other nodes. Uh, the streams where this node is is registered is connected to uh, what um, what happens when they they end when is going to when when this node is going also to end um, because then you have like uh, operators for starting or for um, doing uh, doing computation again and. Um, so you have to skip until you have to get taken to you. It is the, the opposite of, of the, the, the it's, it's the it's like skip take skip until taken to you. So it's going to take all the elements to you. An element arrives on second on second connected uh, sequence to the node. Um, then you have uh, other types of nodes. For instance, you have co combined latest that it's uh, whenever you have like to um, it can connect to two streams, but it's always going to to do the combination of um, of the two last ones whenever one of the combination produces an element. So the first combination has produces this element since there is no element on the second stream. Um, no element is produced on the on the output, but whenever, but then the second stream produces an element, and so now there are two elements, uh, 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 and uh, and the combination of both is produced, um, and then uh, since the first stream produces another element, is going to combine this element with the the, the orange circle with the with the grail with the grail was angle. Uh, uh, and then there's the, the blue circle. It's combined with the, with the uh, Los Angeles. Uh, and then the when when star arrives, it's going to be combined with the with the with the 
do silico uh, and so forth and so on and it's going to terminate uh, as soon as all of the things that are connected to the uh, as uh, when all of the when all of the streams that are connected to where is resistant combined with is resistant uh, whenever all of them terminate and then you can see it by here so this one terminates before, but it doesn't terminate con combined lattice. But when this one terminates, this one terminates. Okay. Um, the transform we already covered. Um, so, for instance, right, the grayscale is the transform. Transform is, is the most straightforward one. Um, but um, but you can also have special ways of, of, of transforming stuff. So, um, so, for instance, you can there's like this special way uh, that so transform is like a, you select one element you apply a, a function and one of the functions that you can apply is that you can apply uh, to one element you can apply a function that makes like two elements um, and so you can execute several uh, you can execute like you can you can execute code when each uh, for each one of the uh, elements that arrive, uh, and and this can be done in ways that uh, that for people that are used to normal languages that can be really like strange, but for instance here you are executing code uh, for the red uh, circle, right? But then the green circle arrives, and you start to execute code. But in before that you finish executing the code for the green one, and there's a blue one that arrives. And so so this is a way of like it's like almost like multi-threading. It's like you can call a function in a way that that function is run it like in parallel uh, sort of way. And um, Uh, and so this can be used, for instance, for playing the audio on the queue. On this example, uh, whenever so you have to select many. Select many is an nested workflow. So so some of those um, uh, transforms they can they can be so the, whenever uh, um, sorry whenever um, a node has something in here on documentation that you see that you can apply some kind of function. Uh, the way that we have decided to make it in bonsai is that it's a nested uh, uh, you it's a nested uh, workflow and you can put uh, nodes inside of it uh, and so this means that uh, uh, this uh, workflow is going to be executed whenever you press one key but if you press the keys and 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 the thing that you it's being executed is uh, playing a, a playing a, a, a audio clip Audio reader, audio playback. But if you press the key twice before the audio reader finishes, uh, you are going to have um, you are going to play the two sounds at the same time. And if, if you press really fast, and if it's a, a long audio clip, you can have like multiple uh, plays of the same sound together. And so this is the illustration for select many. So these type of nodes are like the Functional higher order nodes in bonsai, and uh, that you are going to learn whenever you 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 start to do more advanced stuff. You 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 can do those things. This is another example of uh, higher order uh, operator in bonsai. This is called the, the triggered window. So uh, I talked about a little bit like these timelines, right? We have these timelines. Uh, and trigger window is uh, he, he, he is registered on the first sequence, and so it starts when one of these timelines, a new timeline, whenever the second sequence produces a, a, a an element, um, and so it's a way of uh, spawning. So this in the in the Twitter account. Uh, Seeing this is really like a strange thing. It's like a, it's like I don't know. Would be like a span, a span account that uh, that is able to make new accounts 
whenever someone uh, maybe can be like one of those Trump supporters, uh, fake uh, uh, personas on the on the internet or something like that. So it's going to spawn several several new timelines. Um, and so and so in this example, what what's being done is like like. Um, uh, a video is being produced, and whenever you press the key, you are going to cut the the video. So you cut the video in 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 in, in chunks. You can cut the video in in, in chunks as, as as it is here. Uh, and so um, and so you are generating several several um, timelines, several new observables. And what you are the select many is doing is that is running the code here this code for each one of them. So what and, and the code that is running is the is writing the video. So what this is doing is that is writing this the the video that is being cut in uh, different files. Okay, and so I think I finished. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay. Yeah, there are quite a few questions on the chat. I was waiting for an opportunity to to uh, okay. to ask them. Uh, so, first question that there were uh, on the chat is: Can you make a GUI to a node? So, like, so you have some sort of window to customize the parameters, uh, like a small graphical interface to the thing. So there are yeah. So. Um... So there are several ways of um, so you can program your own node. So this is like uh, which is that was another question that they were asking. Can they can they make some top tier nodes? So uh, please elaborate on that. Sorry, sorry. Have to have... That was so another the, the question quest... that they had okay. was if you if you can make your own nodes, and I know the answer to that. But please elaborate on how how is it how easy is it to do one of your own nodes? Okay. Uh, okay, so your own notes. Okay, so Gonzalo, do you want to show to make your own notes? Yeah, I can, or, I can, I can so show, but, but also, but also nice I want to just uh, answer the first question, just to not leave it unanswered. Yeah, about the, so there the are several user. layers on that question. There are several layers, yes. So there's, there's several layers, both in the making your own interface and in making your own code. Uh, you can go as deep as you want in any of them. Uh, as uh, Joan was showing, uh, each node has its own property. So the bonsai editor already has a, a user interface, which is this one you are seeing here, or you can look at the data and you can configure the properties of the nodes. Uh, that uh, And, and one, one thing you can do if you make groups of nodes, you can externalize the properties and arrange them in a way that... So um, first, if I can show that maybe you are sharing my screen. Yes. While we talk, I can I can show that. Yeah, so exactly, for instance, yeah. like on the example right. that we have before, what I can do, for instance, I have like this big uh, confusion, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I can come here, I can do like for instance, I I can I can group maybe these nodes in here, like maybe like these. Yeah, I can group those nodes. Uh, maybe with this scale out, yeah. so I can group those. Group uh, is in uh, group workflow, yeah. and then, for instance, I can go inside, right? And then this one doesn't have the. Uh, oh, this is bad. So imagine that I. I'm, uh, wait, wait. Uh, I'm going to do it here. Something. I'm going to do it here. The the. Yeah. Just to be easier, to explain. So there's a rescale exactly. node that has properties in here, right? But we could we could have like uh, we could have more properties, and I don't want to see all this. So I can I can group this, and then I can externalize some of these properties, but not all the ones that mm -hmm. I want to show, right? For instance, like minimum, and then in here you only have you the have the, available. you have only the minimum, and then I can also give a name. So this is one of the ways, right, Gonzalo? Yeah, exactly. So this is the first way, just from an organizational perspective. And actually, this is also the first layer of making your own nodes, is you can make it out of other nodes. So you yeah. can yeah. group 
everything and by selecting which properties you want to configure, uh, then in the end, you'll end up with a node that uh, is organized. That, that's one layer. Um, but then, of course, uh, we want to go deeper. Um, and so if you want to make your own, let's say, your own interface, so that there's this first layer, but of course, there's the ultimate layer, which is you could make uh, like an external interface. And um, I'll show you, actually, just after this, uh, a bit of how you can do computer graphics and uh, in various ways in, in Bonsai, but uh, user interfaces um, is something that we usually leave, if, it, if they're custom, really custom, then we actually just leave them uh, outside. So what, what we do is, uh, what I've been doing recently, Bonsai, João hasn't shown, but um, you can open, you can turn Bonsai into a server. So Bonsai can act as a server that sends data to any other process. So if you then, what we've been doing more recently is you can like design interfaces in an external, let's say, um, like in a browser or like. Uh, yeah, I was gonna some... say HTTP sounds yeah. like the easier way to just uh, do stuff, and then you yeah. can connect by OSC. You, or something you just like connect. That, yeah, sockets. then you we use we use Open Sound Control. You can pass data in and out. Uh, we've we've interfaced this way with uh, with Python, with JavaScript, with uh, uh, Unity, things like that. Um, there's another way, which is uh, I can also show you. Um, so you can uh, actually. Let me just, yeah. Just to interrupt mm -hmm. you. So mm -hmm. there's. Uh, so when you are talking about like um, building your own nodes, mm -hmm. uh, you can also program them, right? And one yeah, of yeah, the things yeah, that yeah. Uh, also it's, uh, it comes from free is that a lot of the infrastructure from bonsai for showing like data, and for changing properties, uh, you don't need to do nothing. Is just, are you going to show that? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can, we can do yeah, so. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I, we can. Yeah, there's things I that remember, are. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can, I can show. Okay, let me share my screen. I remember at Artica, while you set things up, I can, I can share this experience. At Artica, we did both like uh, our own specific nodes of stuff that we wanted, and it was just recompiling stuff on on uh, .NET. Um, we they had to include a few DLLs and that kind of stuff, but it was relatively easy to make your own nodes and import them into Bonsai. But we could also have like the whole project with our own custom uh, window wind forms kind of uh, GUI, and then have the Bonsai as the backend which we would uh, feed into. But you you would need to do that by code, so it's totally possible to do like a standalone application with Bonsai yeah. as the 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 back engine sort of thing. Yeah, okay, it's I'm very, and, yours... and, and you can do it, and you can do it both. Uh, I guess, yeah, I'll share my screen. So I already have Bonsai. Yeah, you can even, video. like, one of things, yeah, you can export, like, uh, the workflow as a DLL, and then you can mm -hmm. you can connect. Yeah, so, it. so uh, Bonsai is not just a self contained black box. You can actually export your program and open it from another, another from other software. So any software that can interface with C Sharp can call a bonsai workflow. So we've used this to interface uh, bonsai with uh, stuff like Unity uh, or uh, or other programs that can just call the workflow um, and access it as if it's a function. And so you can just read the data that is coming out of bonsai either through sockets or through from the output. So if because Unity by is function call by function call yeah just call, just call it as a fun as a function and. I'm happy it's to like show that DLL. if people are interested. Like yeah, but yeah. what I wanted to show is so that um, yeah, you could we can uh, we can definitely do that. But what I wanted to show is um, uh, in bonsai there's also some scripting functionality built in. So if you type so there's there's a couple of different ways that we can. Are you um, showing screen? I'm, I'm, I'm showing screen. bonsai. I'm showing Gonzalo's okay. screen now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you write if you on the toolbox, if you look for scripting, then you will see the main uh, kind of ways of um, doing scripting in, in Bonsai. There are currently built in, and there, there will be more in the future. Uh, but currently, you can script with both small expressions that I can um, I can show you what uh, what they are um, in a moment. But uh, so for example, these 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 would be something like uh, I'm going to put a timer here, 
it's going to fire like uh, reasonably oh, yeah. fast. Uh, another quick question that I can insert yeah. here, which relates to this, is how do you do like uh, math uh, stuff? If you want to do like a, a math equation, exactly. you have to put a lot of operators, or can you? Just, yeah, yeah, like, no, no, like yeah, that, that, that's expression. perfect. That's exactly that's exactly the question. So these expression transforms are exactly for these kind of small mathematical expressions. So you can just mm -hmm. open. Uh, you have the math support, um, and you can call like. Um, the functions that are built in into the into the .NET uh, math libraries, uh, you can call them in here. Um, so, for example, what's happening here is I set up a periodic timer of 20 milliseconds, uh, and every 20 milliseconds, it's uh, producing basically a counter. So, if I open it, it's just a linear kind of ramp uh, increasing. But now I've applied a, fine, a sign function to it, so basically, it's going to um, to oscillate uh, around uh, around that uh, that value, and what uh, what we could do is we could kind of scale it up so you can see uh, like better like some kind of so you can kind of build um, build build functions in in this way. Um, so just by writing these kind of small um, expressions, uh, so that that's the first level of scripting. And you can also using this one, you can also set up a condition. So for example, you could say things like uh, uh, okay, from here you could say a condition would be. You can threshold it, for instance. Yeah, we can do like a, if is it bigger than zero? So if it's bigger than zero, uh, then. So uh, so if this 0. is bigger 5. than zero, it's fine. It's fine. So it's oh, only going to give yeah, me the. Yeah, it's going yeah. to give me just a positive. Yeah. Half of uh, the uh, sign, so right? So so yeah. what the condition is doing is essentially applying a filter on each value. And if it satisfies the uh, conditions of the filter, then the value is retweeted in the Twitter metaphor. Uh, so mm -hmm. you get this kind of. Uh, it's not, it's not. Condition. And you can see that it stops. Can you show it again that you can see it like. Yeah, uh, which are the so operators you were talking about earlier, for example. Like you have several ways to display what is happening, waiting for something to show up, or always. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, Multiple ways to, to yeah. So the yeah, you can see that uh, the one that is producing doesn't stop, and then the other one stops. Yeah, exactly. Basically. So you can see you yeah. can see that these are all working. These are all working, but this is the one that stops. So this is just not retweeting the value that uh, that arrives yeah. at that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, you make some pause. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so and then is... uh, so this is one thing. Then uh, that's one level. Of scripting, just small uh, expressions that are mathematical. There's a bunch of things you can actually do with this, including creating new types that I may show later if we have time. Um, the other one that I, I'm, I'm going to skip for now, but uh, you can also script in Python. Uh, so if you're used to Python, you can. Uh, uh, Bonsai supports a Python implementation that uh, is built on top of .NET, so you can. Combine Python and .NET kind of seamlessly. What about uh, Lua? Uh, Everyone is so mad about Lua. You don't have Lua support. Yeah, I don't. They don't have Lua support. It's uh, it's actually Lua is quite an old language, uh, scripting language. <laughs> it's quite nice, but uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm happy if say, anyone wants to do a Lua integration. That would be nice. But uh, uh, another I, question on the chat: Where are the minimal requirements to run Bonsai, and also the require the recommended requirements? Yeah. So there's. Um, the biggest requirement so far used to be used to be that you had to have Windows. This is no no longer true. So you can run it on on Ubuntu. We've run it successfully on Ubuntu 16, uh, 18 and twenty oh four. You have to install them with Mono. Yeah, that's the, the current. And uh, by the end of the year, we are porting Bonsai. Um, the, at least the core is already running. We already have a branch running on the new um, .NET Core. And uh, now in one month, it will be .NET 5, which then it will essentially run anywhere. So Could they, you have they, issues they have with both, yeah. different operating systems on how they handle, like, I don't know, uh, ports for communication for Arduino yeah, stuff so, or yeah, audio yeah, ports? Yeah, there, there's, there's going to be issues. Yeah, yeah, there, there's there's issues. So that's why I was saying, so the, 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 yeah. the so, Linux support yeah. has started. Well, uh, I've, help is welcomed. <laughs> yeah, help is welcome on this front. If you want uh, this you running run on, it, on Linux, <laughs> please join. The... It, yeah, yeah, please. you can run it on Ubuntu. That's no no issue. You can. Uh, I was able already to access cameras and uh, and audio like microphones and things like that. And 
and generate sound and like many and then play shaders uh, like computer graphics stuff. So what so about hardware get, requirements like CPU, graphics card, the RAM? That there's you no, use? there's no, there's no requirements. Um, if your computer can run Windows or, or if, you, if your computer can run an operating system, Ubuntu or Windows, then you can run Bonsai. Yeah, for as long as then good it, experience, it will, you will it, hit limitation. You will hit a limitation, of course, if you if you want to connect because then depends it depends on the program that you make. Program that you yeah. make, yeah. It's, a, it's like a programming it language. The program. It's a programming there's, language, so it's like what yeah. is the limitation of the yeah. There's no there's no uh, requirements for C compiler. or Python or JavaScript. Yeah, it's just yeah, but yeah. how heavy is it? I, I think for some you have a good example, which was that small computer that you bought from yeah. some interactive installations that were that were like very small specs on that, and it worked fine. Yeah. So maybe yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Small computers are getting more and more powerful, and yeah, right now you can get like mini computers like the Raspberry Pi and Latte Panda, yeah. and they can. But like, it, it really depends on things. what you are doing. For instance, if you have a small computer and you are doing like image processing, you are going to hit some some barrier. Maybe you need to rescale the image. Maybe, but it's depending on on the program that you are doing. It's like saying what is minimum requires for the GNU C compiler. Uh, yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. It's not. The compiler itself, it's more the program that you write with the compiler itself. And I think that mm -hmm. it's the, the, the message here. Because the yeah. bonsai yeah. itself is not that heavy load. Uh, it's it's the stuff that you start adding, the nodes that you start adding that yes. starts to yeah. Uh, over. Yeah, yeah. Bon yeah. bonsai is very, very, very lightweight. So this is something and that I think, you... uh, yeah. I think for I think for Zal mentioned this, but uh, the bonsai is really compiling your code to machine code. So there, so there's no, there's a graphical front well, end that you are play. seeing here, but when I press play, this is actually all the code is compiled and runs in in the machine of your computer. So there's no like, kind of extra layer running on top. I mean, there's the if you open up these windows to look at the data, then there's a extra visualization, small cost. But other than that, oh, if I yeah. if I have everything closed, then there's no nothing extra being uh, kind of added. Yeah, it's you just have running. A, a ways of running running bonsai on a command line without the interface. Yeah, you can run bonsai um, without an interface from a command line from an, yeah. from another program. Yeah, as I was mentioning. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Okay, so let me just show quickly the scripting, and then we can. Okay. So the the, the, the the last part. level the last level of yeah then I go to the shader. So the last level of scripting, which gives you more the more most flexibility, is you can just code nodes in C sharp. Um, and the four types of nodes that uh, uh, João showed, like sources, transforms, combinators, and syncs, can be uh, can be scripted. Uh, so, for example, I can take the camera and I can add a C sharp transform. And if you do this, uh, if you double click on the node, um, it's going to ask you like a couple of questions. So first, you need to uh, create an extensions folder. Because the first level, level also of extensibility is you can add scripts to your own little project. But later, you can also make uh, a package that you can distribute to other people. But this is the first layer. You just want to make something for yourself. So you just say, yes, I want to create extensions folder. And then in the extensions folder, it's you can give a name to the script. So let's say this is my transform. And then um, the node becomes my transform. The script, the integration for scripting is currently for Visual Studio Code, so it will launch Visual Studio Code or ask or ask you to install it if it doesn't, uh, if you don't have it uh, yet. And then what you will, what will happen after you install the C Sharp extension and all of that, it will ask you to resolve the dependencies. If you click Restore, then um, it will pull all the um, integration into Visual Studio Code such that you can have uh, proper help with the scripting. And it will pull in all the types. So um, one thing that is nice, uh, I think Frazon didn't mention this a lot, but um, even though you can visually com combine all these things, um, Bonsai is a fully typed language. So um, uh, it's a functional programming language. Uh, it has types. It's not like Python that or JavaScript that you don't know what the type of a variable is. Um, every, everything in Bonsai, you know what the type uh, is. But what it does, it tries to help you so that the types don't get in the way. So for example, when you when you place a C-sharp scripting transform like this, um, it Bonsai will fill in the types for you. So it knows that the input was uh, an image. 
So it's going to load the dependency of the of OpenCV, which is the, the library we use to to rep, to access and manipulate images. It's going to fill that in for you, and it's going to assume which you can change, but it's going to assume first order that you're going to make a transform that's going to return something of the same type. But you can change that, and then um, then inside you can apply functions to each element that. Um, that you can use to like make your transformation. So what I can do is I can create an output image. Um, this is usually, and you see there's like a built-in IntelliSense because it knows like what the types are. So there's like help, things like that. Uh, so you can say, I want to create an image. That's going to be my output um, of the same type. And uh, so I'm going to make a threshold by hand for now, just so we can, um, yeah, so I'm going to, uh, threshold my um, my value uh, image. Uh, how does it handle garbage collecting and all that stuff? Like if you create uh, yeah, a variable dot, there, dot net ha we... handle, yeah. Dot net handles the garbage collection. Um, so it's basically there's um, two approaches to this. Uh, you can um, you can set up fixed buffers if you want. So mm -hmm. uh, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new image on the fly every time. Surprisingly, for some people, uh, this actually works quite well. Uh, and uh, uh, like the, the the garbage collector and the memory management in in both C# -sharp and Windows are better than than a lot of people give it give it credit for. Um, so you can actually run things like this. Um, if you want, though, you can set up the fixed buffers outside. So I can put the fixed buffer. Um, I can cache a fixed buffer and maintain it over. But actually, in the end, it's um, it's surprisingly often that you don't need to do this. And in fact, none of the bonsai operators do this. Um, what will happen in the back in in the back uh, end is that uh, the operating system is uh, clever enough to realize that you are allocating uh, buffers of similar size. So it's mostly what you're going to do because your if your program has a regular behavior that you're always allocating uh, images of the same size and that it's uh, uh, you are mostly like using a, those images, re reusing those images and dumping them and then going again, then yeah. your program is going to get always the same blocks actually. So you're getting a lot of the and because uh, this is a, a an issue some some people have with security, but because on Windows when you allocate memory on Windows, um, Windows doesn't actually zero your memory. So the, the, that's an extra cost that you don't have. So you just, you just get the allocation in Windows can be extremely fast. But anyway, you can, you can fix the allocation if you want. But that's a bigger discussion uh, that I would okay. skip for now. But um, so just to complete the example, so I would regret, so this is a, a small little uh, example of the thresholds. I think I need, to, yeah, I need to put also a max value just going to threshold it to 55 and the threshold type, type threshold to type put, yeah binary so that's so that will be like a simple threshold uh so now i and save my script to, to put a property there yeah i'll, I'll show that in a, i'll show that in a bit so okay. so so just so after so after i've um uh saved my script then what you need to do is you need to reload uh extension so there's a little button here on the uh, on the edge of the toolbar this one um, if you click on reload extensions, uh, Bonsai will just reload the editor for you and load uh, any of the scripts that you may have created. So in this case, I've created only this one, my transform. If I play it, then uh, I have my threshold. But now the threshold is fixed, of course. So uh, now what I can do, another nice thing is if for your scripts, if you double click on them, it will... Uh, so already seeing that you, you have your... visualizer for your node without, uh, without me. Yeah, you didn't to... even do anything. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, then what so you can do is you can fill it with properties. So I can say, okay, now I want a, a threshold, right? So I can, I can, um, so I can apply a threshold. Okay. Like, uh, so what you can do to, to configure your node is you can just declare a property on the the node uh, script like this, and then uh, use it inside the threshold. So put it inside, and uh, if I do this and now I reload it again, it will show up as parameters. The, 
it'll show up as a property here. So automatically, nice. the, the the properties that are declared in your nodes will show up in the in the editor, and then you can change now the property uh, by text. Of course, by text is tedious. So uh, what we can also do is we can um, we can decorate these properties with information that's going to to help bonsai to make a better editor for the property so what you can do is you can say okay i want to say this property goes from a range these are attributes in c sharp for those who don't know you can put these square brackets and they are like metadata or decorators um by the way i can you can use them also to add descriptions to the notes so i can say this is my own custom threshold and uh, now I can uh, say, okay, the range of this property is from 0 to 55, for example. And I want the editor of the property to be, and there's a very convenient set of types. You can make your own type, by the way. You can even code yourself how the properties might be edited. But there's a, uh, some of them that are already like done, so like the slider. So you can set up a slider editor. Or a numeric up down. Uh, or a numeric up down. Um, and if you, you have to set it like this, is a pattern that is, so you have to say is a slider editor, is a user interface editor. There's other types of editors. Um, but if you do this, then um, when I reload the extension, so now I have uh, my description. So this is my own custom threshold. And now the threshold has the slider uh, on the range that you've set, specified. So you can, and you can change it on the fly. So you can be in here and uh, yeah, now change this to the threshold. So you so just made the kind of a copy of the, the threshold. So that. Um, yeah, and you can so use uh, like any function of the um, I remember CV. a couple of years ago on Bonsai, we didn't have this uh, scripting inside Bonsai itself. You would have to open Visual Studio outside and then reload the whole thing. So this is much yeah. more convenient. It's very convenient, mostly for fast coding, yeah. But you can also, yeah. but you can still do the same thing with, uh, with Visual Studio. Uh, Normal one, there's templates that you can add to make your own package and make your own project. So all this is also supported, but now you can do it like that. Um, okay, so this is it for, and yeah, inside scripting, you can do whatever you want. So you could even call, you can create a, a user interface in a scripting node, actually, which we could we could do. Um, that's another way to make a, I guess, a custom user interface is you can program it in C Sharp. Uh, it's also doable. Uh, okay, so one, if there are no more questions for now, uh, uh, yeah, I, would right go now. For... I would go for the shaders, which was the kind of the last example we had prepared. Uh, for... What kind of shaders do you have? It's like pixel shaders, vertex shaders, compute shaders. So we have everything, everything. Well, not everything maybe, but we have compute shaders, uh, fr fragment shaders, vertex shaders, um, geometry shaders. Um, and you can configure them very easily. You can have direct access to them. Um, the, the specification that we're following is OpenGL4, so all, all or, or, or greater. Uh, so uh, you can use, uh, as long as your graphics card supports uh, OpenGL4, then you can, uh, you can use the, the shaders package. And uh, yeah, this is an example that uh, we, we picked for today because we wanted to show you how you can think about graphics, interactive computer graphics, in this reactive way, mm -hmm. um, and show you how 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 you uh, how you can kind of quickly put, a, put something together. So the so if you look for shaders in bonsai, then you'll see that there's a lot of nodes uh, that are around shaders um, that include everything about how to interface with the window uh, that is the OpenGL window that we're going to create, but also to send data in and out of the shaders, and also to create the data types that are usually useful in computer graphics, like matrices and vectors and, and, uh, and projection, uh, pers yeah, perspective views and things like that. Um, so we, we start by creating a window. So that's the source. So it's a source that's essentially just going to create your render window. And here, there's a lot of properties that you can specify, such as the, the width and height of the window, whether it's full screen or not, uh, in which display do you want it to show. So if you have multiple displays, you can 
show it full screen on a secondary display or just extend it across several displays, things like that. Uh, the clear color, you can set the graphics modes, the render frequency, and a bunch of other things. Um, so that's the entry point. Um, and then, so the output of this is a window, which has many things. Uh, what we are going to do here, so the way you draw then things on the window is everything in Bonsai runs on shaders. That's that's why it's called shaders. So the the what the way you draw something on the screen is you need at the very least you need a, a pixel shader or a fragment shader to which is a small little program that's going to run in your GPU. Uh, it's going to run a small piece of code for every single pixel um, and in parallel for all the pixels. And that pixel will determine the color of uh, sorry that program will determine the color of that pixel. Um, so you do this. Um, the first thing you want to do with uh, window is you want to is you want to load the shaders in, and potentially any other data that you want to to use in your programs. So you do this by loading resources. So if you look for resources, then you have a bunch of uh, well, not a bunch, but well, several, a couple maybe. But you have some resources that uh, resource types that you can load. You can also make your own resource types. Uh, but these are the ones that are currently built in uh, that you can already do a lot of with them. So the the one I'm going to add now is just a shader, a shader resources. So this is a node that's going to take the window and add um, shaders to the window to be run. And so you double you can double click on the node. Uh, what I did was just double clicking on it. Um, and it will allow you to add uh, shaders, different kinds. There's mostly the three that we use that, are, that come built in are materials, uh, viewport effects is like full screen post processing effects, and uh, and compute and compute shaders that you can also configure that are running all the time. Um, you can. So what I'm going to use now, just to keep things simple, is I'm going to set up a viewport effect uh, that's going to be just a, a full screen. Uh, shader that's going to run for every pixel in my in my window. Um, so I'm I'm going to call it effect. Um, and actually, now I need to specify the the shader program that uh, that defines what uh, what what that what that shader is doing. Uh, and actually, before I do that, I need to actually open up the shader editor that you can access. So you can write your shader in any editor that, that you like, uh, but Bonsai does come with a built-in shader editor uh, that you can access by uh, double-clicking on, win on the Create Window node or right-clicking and going to Show Default Editor. So this will open up the, the built-in shader editor. Uh, one question. And so this was built on top of uh, OpenGL. So I guess you only support This GLSL. is OpenGL. Yeah, yeah, this is OpenGL. So it's GLSL so shaders. No yeah. no HLSL then. Sorry? Only GLSL, no HLSL. Only, uh, only GLSL for now. Yeah. OK. This is mostly to keep things simple and also towards a It's good enough. They're so platform. similar. And yeah. HLSL is only for DirectX, people who do DirectX stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, which is uh, it totally, it's a great, um, I program in DirectX for a long time, but um, I also enjoy, yeah. It, the, the question another, that you're going to have is if you can just import a shader from Shader Toy and if it will just work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we should. A any shader. So, 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 <laughs> well, so, so the, the thing with Shader Toy is, um, well, uh, yes, because, I mean, in the end, it's going to be a GLSL shader, I think. Uh, you can write GLSL shaders in Shader Toy, I believe, and uh, I'll show you how you can connect. Um, yeah. yeah, you can also, yeah, if you have any cool shaders you want to send me, you can try to run it here. But let me sh let me show you the basic. Let me show you the basic uh, a basic example first, and then we can play. Okay, okay. However we want. Um, so then we can try to crash examples. your tool <laughs> with very yeah, weird you... shaders, very intense stuff. Go on, go on. Please yeah, continue. Yeah. So. Yeah, so there's some built-in examples. I'm going to use the, the viewport effect one that is basically just going to write. Uh, so there's just two things in this shader. One is the coordinates of the pixel, which are going to be, so these are texture coordinates. But in this case, because it's a full screen shader, 
they're effectively the, the coordinates of the window of the screen uh, from zero to one in each dimension, starting in the uh, bottom left corner. And uh, yeah, they're going to go from zero to one. Uh, and the goal of the vertex of the fragment shader is to uh, assign a color to the pixel. So you need to know, OK, which color should my pixel be? And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the coordinates of the pixel itself as my color data. So text coordinate is a 2D vector. So it has x and y, which is the position of the, uh, the pixel. And I'm going to use that, that, that x and y as the x, as the r and g, as the red and green components of the color. So you can just pass the, the, the vector directly into the constructor of the, of the color. Uh, and if you, if I, so I'm just going to save this as my effect shader, uh, fragment shader. And now that I have a file that with a little shader, you can also just play, play here to, to validate that your shader is correct. And then what you can do is you can uh, assign, um, yeah, you can set my, my fragment shader. So this is how you would, uh, uh, yeah, to, to a material, to this viewport effect, okay? And now what's going to happen, um, I need to load. So you, you can put a bunch of resources here. We're going to do that in a moment. And then in the end, you need to load them all so that they're loaded. Uh, and then uh, once you do that, when you run uh, the screen, the window starts and it's running your shader. So it's essentially running for every pixel in your screen. It's running this little program. and. Uh, you can see that uh, I said the, the zero, 00 of the coordinates start in the bottom left corner. So that's zero, 00 here. So this uh, pixel will have uh, a red of 0, a green of 0, then 0, and uh, the last one is alpha is transparency. So uh, you can see that it starts at zero, 00, so black. And then as you go along the x dimension, which is red, you get like the red uh, hue. Uh, and then if you go along the vertical dimension, then you get uh, green, which is just uh, the second component. And then if you go along the diagonal, you have a yellow, which is the, the combination of. And here you have basically the, the linear combination in between that is telling the space is the combination of, uh, of all red and green uh, colors. Uh, now, the cool thing with, uh, with this is, well, first of all, it's very easy to set up like a little shader program uh, that you can play with. But the nice thing is you can then very quickly and directly connect it to any other bonsai input that you want. So for example, I can, um, in shaders, you can declare these very useful parameters called uniforms, which are kind of like values that stay the same. They're not constants, but they stay the same for uh, one frame or one drawing call. So the for all the pixels that are going to run here, this value is going to have the same, uh, this variable is going to have the same value. So I'm going to call it a, a value. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is simply to let's add it to the to my texture points and let's see what happens. So I'm just going to uh, yeah, I'm just going to do that. And then uh, what I can do is I can take another source of input. So for example, I'm going to take, uh, for now, the mouse uh, movement. So this is a source of events that now operates on the window. So when I um, so when I run this, um, if you see here, uh, when I move my mouse over the, the window, it's going to generate uh, events from the mouse movement uh, node. And what I can do here is I can, um, convert the mouse um, coordinates to uh, normalize. It's called normalized device coordinates. This is the default OpenGL coordinates for um, the screen, which uh, are going to be, if I see it here, um, they go from um, minus 1, minus 1 to 1, 1. Okay. Um, and they are 0, 0, they are 0 in the middle. Kind of. um, and then what I can do is I can take, let's say, the x uh, uh, coordinate of that, uh, of that, and I can update my uniform. So essentially, what I can do is change that little variable over here with 
uh, whatever is coming out of the of the mouse movement. So I can pick my shader. I want to pick my effect shader and change the uniform value. Um, and if I do that, then um, as I move my mouse now over the screen, I'm changing the uh, output of the shader because that's essentially the, the the calculations that are being done here are now biased by the value term. So if you remember, the zero zero is here. So if I if I stay in the middle, then it's about the same output. If I pull it towards towards minus one, so this is minus one minus one, then I'm pulling all the black because the color uh, levels off at zero. So you cannot go below zero in color. It's going to end up yeah. being black. So it just stays at black. If I pull it the other way, then it's going to be all yellow. So it'll be like a one one. Uh, yeah. So you can do like these kind of things. Um, yeah, so then you can, yeah, you can do whatever you want. I'll show one more example, which is, uh, so this is, you can pass whatever, as many values as you want in here. You can just declare more variables and map them to different inputs. So we could uh, as easily the same what, what Frazan was doing. If I take my microphone and I do the, the kind of little um, uh, volumeter that uh, Frazan did, um, I can just uh, pass it to the shader. I can say. And also like, use that as control of the value. Yeah. Yeah. So we can move this node over there. And uh, now this is updating the value. And now my, oh, something happened. The, ah, yes. So this is the, I've declared it's a type mismatch. So I've declared this has type float, but after the rescale, it has a double type. Uh, you can solve this in various ways. Um, one easy way is you can just put a little transform and do a cast. You can do a cast. It's a good example to have here. So you can write. Um, I'll show two examples actually, which are nice. So I'm going to use a little expression to convert the double to um, uh, a float. And one thing that is nice that uh, I think is very useful is you can actually write. Uh, this is for fast people who code like to code fast uh, in in line. So when you write in the toolbox, you you write the name of the function you want to call. You can actually type the parameters of the function for some of them that are marked in the in the operator. You can write them in line. So what I can do here is I can just write I want to cast this to I want to cast my input to a float. So I just wrote it in the toolbox, and then it put it as the expression of the of the script. So I didn't have to kind of go inside and write it. It was already written as I put it there. Um, anyway, so now it should work, and yeah. So now I have the the thing moving as I as I speak. Um, so it's now it's being mapped with the with the audio. So yeah, so you could map any variable that you want uh, in this way. But one more one more type that I will show as one final example is how to send uh, uh, image data or buffer data inside a shader. So um, one thing you can also do is you can, um, besides the shader resources, you can add um, buffers. So you can add the uh, texture resources and even mesh resources. But let's start with textures. And uh, what you can do, um, you can load images. You can drag and drop. Into the into the the dialog, you can drag and drop like images that you have and things that you want to show. Um, but for now, the only thing I'm going to add is a a 2D texture, a dynamic one, that I'm going to call a video. And what I'm going to do is I I want to update that texture from my camera. So what I can do is I can put here the camera node, and then I pipe that data to a texture. That's going to be my video texture. So what this will do is essentially update that buffer in my in my graphics card with the image information, and then that allows me to in the shader to declare a a sampler. So this is going to be a variable that I can use to represent my texture and allows me to read the from the texture. So what I can do is uh, now um, Actually, take a color. This is going to be my my um, the color that is in my image. This is or this is my pixel. Um, 
which is going to come from my texture. So I'm going to use the uh, texture coordinates of my screen to pick pixels in the texture, uh, pixel values from the texture. And then I'm going to uh, basically, well, let's start with, start with. So I'm just going to write, literally just going to read a pixel from the image and add the value that I got from the other uniform. And that's going to be the rest of the color. So the color of each pixel in my screen is going to be the color of the pixel in my image in the texture that I've created, plus the whatever the value that is here. Um, OK, so then the last thing that I need to do for this to work is I need to bind this variable because the shader doesn't know where this variable texture comes from. So I'm updating the texture over here, but I need to also say that this texture is connected to that variable. And you do this in the shader. So you have to go back to the shader, um, and you have to go to the buffer bindings and say that I want to bind um, I want to bind my texture video okay, to my variable text. And that's uh, going to, to effectively connect both together. Uh, the, the other and uniform now we'll the have... value you could just uh -huh. randomly assign. This one you need to be binding the texture. Yeah, because I guess, yeah, on OpenGL you have to declare the, the binding. You have to declare the, the binding, yeah. yeah. So the, there's... Um, Sorry, this is a bit distracting, but uh, You're upside yeah, down. So it's mapped already. So it's basically adding the intensity of the sound is kind of making the screen go up. Um, but the, um, we can also just flip. So the reason why everything is flipped, because the images from OpenCV come uh, uh, top down, and the textures in OpenGL are bottom, bottom up. And so we can, we can flip them uh, vertically. Uh, that should fix it. Uh, but what I wanted to say is that, yes, we wanted to keep the, um, all of the flexibility of OpenGL in the shaders interface to uh, of one side. And so it can be slightly more tedious because there's many things we cannot do automatically because we want to give you full flexibility. Um, but yeah, all of the things that you might want to do, like binding different buffers to different things, uh, is possible here. Like for example, you could even plug in. Um, that's really cool. Very that, that's quite a bitch to do by 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 hand by bare yeah, metal ex coding. Yeah, ex exactly, that's... exactly. That that's the whole point. So for example, I can even pipe the whole audio waveform in here. So for example, so if I just do this, as a buffer, see what happens? As a yeah, so, sampler to the so we well. can res we have to probably rescale it, but uh, so now I'm going to do it like a slightly different thing. So you can yeah zero to one, and then yeah I'll say thousand. Um, so you can pipe in like uh, like different kinds of data. So now you're kind of like um, yeah modulating like this is like a, a representation of the waveform mm -hmm. uh, in the in the shader, kind of have a. When you stretch the window, does yeah. it change the actual window resolution, or is it just stretching? It's changing the window resolution um, by default, unless unless you unless you uh, define it otherwise. By default, the viewport is going to be stretched to the with the window. So yeah, everything is going to scale the same kind of way. So you can have it like full screen. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So this is this is why like it's uh, quite a nice uh, kind of ability that you can write like the bare metal like shaders, but then you don't have to like deal with the annoying bits that uh, are the coding part where you have to bind all the things into the into the variables in the right way. Like there's a ton of code. I always had um, like a, I have like a, a like this m feeling that like every time you look at uh, OpenGL examples or graphics programming examples, 
I always find it funny that 99% uh, of the code of the example is not the thing that they want to show. Like they want to, they spend like you have like, a, 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 you could have like yeah, a code it's... file with like a thousand lines and none of it does. And then in the end you want to write like a two line shader that you need yeah. a thousand lines of code to set everything up in the correct way. Otherwise yeah. nothing works. And uh, setting so up, that's setting up is the a goal. lot more work than the actual, like the actual stuff on the screen. Yeah, that often exactly. happens. And exactly. So, so, the, so the, the, the point of the bonsai shader interface, for example, was to get rid of that. So we wanted to kind of be very quick setting things up without losing the, the, the power of the things as most, as most as we can without losing the power of the things that we want to do with OpenGL. Uh, but yeah, having this very, very fast way to jump to the shaders, map variables to inputs that are coming in, uh, and then... Um, yeah, and then just playing with that. Uh, Another question from the chat was, how do you how do you do like um, can you do nodes to output GLSL output text? So you could do sorry? like the G the GLSL code itself inside the yeah. main loop. If you could that In, if inside you could what? Do, sorry, do I that can... the GLSL code off. the GLSL uh, code inside the the shader. If you could uh -huh. do that code in nodes itself, so you could have like nodes to do functions that will do GLSL yeah. stuff. Do you understand not what yet. I mean? Not yet. Yeah, absolutely. Not, not yet. Not yet. But we've thought about it. <laughs> there, 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 we, there, there, there are ideas to do it. Yesterday, uh, yesterday that, we had a, that, we had a seminar be, talking about Yeah, that'll be cool that in many topic. different ways. I think you're breaking off. For some reason, I, your, your audio is chopping recently. It only started like maybe a minute ago. We we can hear you uh, clearly though, so that's good. Okay, good. But uh, I cannot hear you very clearly, but it's okay. But I, I got the question, and I, I think the the answer is um, not yet. But uh, interestingly, one thing that uh, is in bonsai that is not very visible uh, superficially is I kept mentioning that bonsai is a compiled language. But more important than that, um, the the program you're writing here, these, these nodes, they are actually generating code. So when you run Bonsai, when you play a Bonsai program, this is generating a program. So there's there's code generation that's running uh, on the tree of your program that then goes to assembly. Because we have control over that code generation, it means we, could, we don't need to generate C-sharp code. We could generate... Uh, other kinds of code, like for example, embedded firmware for an Arduino or a GLSL code for a shader. Uh, and that's actually yeah, one- can, can you export just text, for example? Because if you have text as an or output, just text. you could then or throw just text. it into a yeah, shader. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You could absolutely do that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the cool thing is then just, just thinking about like what operations you'd want, but that's definitely absolutely doable. Uh, it's just we haven't, we haven't put much effort into it because uh, yeah, we were just we've just been playing mostly with these things, and then there are other questions you might, other things that might immediately then pop to mind is you want to visualize the different stages and things like that, which is nice. Um, we haven't, we just haven't put um, so maybe only maybe, so much time, but, but then there's a way uh, of doing it already. Maybe so you can control the way the the you are loading your resources, right? Yeah. Okay, and and you can write files. Yeah. Right. You can so you can you can dump like uh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, exactly exactly so, no, you, you could do so exactly that yeah, yeah. you could you, generate you can code do it already yeah, yeah. you can do it already then you because do then it, you, but, you you control just, the way that you load the resources and you you save the file and you are yeah. able to change stuff absolutely you can, absolutely you can do it so yeah absolutely no no it's just it's just there's no easy way there's no built-in like easy way yeah yeah uh, like well thought way of doing of doing it like visually in a way that is satisfying but i yeah do doable is definitely doable <laughs> just just not immediately available but uh but yeah um any more questions because so, i how much time is this i just want to I'm happy uh, it was to be originally here. 90 before. minutes, so I think we're we're actually at the mark. But we still have to. If there is any more questions yeah, on the chat, I'm or... I'm very happy to to talk for as long as people want to hear. But it's just uh, it's just eventually yeah, we will have to go to bed. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it's just any. But if... 
Uh, there was also a comment earlier on about the icons that they look really good. So I know I know you guys invested a lot of time into well, that, that, that finding was, that the right iconography. Actually, Joao, so is that so, that's uh, kudos to Joao for uh, he designed the graphical language is now very nice with the help of Alexandre, that is a designer at the Mall. and uh, uh, yeah, they made they they made a complete revamp of the uh, so that that's why it's yeah it's um, the new layout of bonsai is. Uh, Completely due to their feedback and input and contributions on yeah, a lot design. more intuitive than just the letters used to be. A question from the chat: How yeah. long has bonsai been in development? Yes, good question. So it's uh, it's gonna be by the end of this year, it's gonna be nine years. So it's uh, eight years. So I've been working on it for eight years and and nine months. <laughs> okay. Um, and it started as uh, as a. Uh, yeah, Joan was mentioning for science, I needed to grab uh, video from cameras and process really fast and synchronize things. And it was a good chance to also learn this reactive programming paradigm that I was very interested in learning at the time uh, and also playing with code generation. So it kind of took a life of its own after that and then kept learning and learning. And uh, I wanted to know how far because one thing that can happen with these graphical languages is they can be useful up to a point. So there, there's a, been a, a, this is more like a long running discussion about why, why hasn't visual programming really taken over? Why are we still programming our code in files of text that are very poor at representing I've seen a lot like of people a, using more graphical programming languages. I mean, if you go to like production, yeah. in terms of production, like for hardcore developers, AAA kind of stuff, they use a lot of uh, their own code, but there's also a lot of graphical programming for small it's, stuff. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's, it's been growing, but um, I think there's a lot of things. Um, so I tend to say one thing. Uh, I've heard actually recently uh, a person summarize it in a way that I think is very nice. So, well, there's many aspects to this question, but one one aspect is programming languages, the productivity of them is actually quite a lot uh, connected to the tooling. Like what tools do you have to manipulate your programs? And one thing that I think visual languages have, uh, it's my personal opinion, so totally biased <laughs> from this point on, but one thing that I think programming languages have spent, a, they spent a lot of time in having um, in the drawing part of the program, but not so much, I think, my opinion, totally biased, not so much in the tooling side of the language. So for example, one thing when I when I decided to make um, program uh, bonsai a visual language, I, I decided very early on that I didn't want to drag things. I didn't want to kind of, in most visual languages, you can drag nodes back and forth yeah, I kind of missed that. But but you, but you can like connect them by dragging, right? Or yeah, you can like you can change you, you yeah 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 you can you can change the order like you can move like parts of the program um, up and down. For example, I can take this and kind of move it. Um, should be able to move it. Out. Oh, it's because I have this open. For some reason I can't do it now. Ah, we found the but bug. He, Oh no! It's because it's running. Sorry, bonsai is running. <laughs> Sorry, you can't modify the program. It's running. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, no, you but you can't can... modify it while oh. it's running. Obviously, it goes but it's out. Uh, but you can uh, you can move things up and down and rearrange stuff and uh, move like. Uh, but you're you can... so. But yeah. But, so but what, the thing. But the thing is, yeah. The thing is, you're reorganizing yeah. the code when you do that. Yeah, you're reorganizing the code. So actually, I like to think that bonsai and if. If you ever, if you'd see me more like programming in bonsai, I rarely touch the mouse. Actually, I, you can type, you can write the whole program like purely by typing. So if I don't know if you noticed when I was building this, but see, like I can start like this and like just start like um, typing, and I'm not even going to the mouse. I'm just kind of writing things. Uh, as I go, and you use it like as a and visual reference of the stuff. It's a visual reference, and and mostly what's going on is um, the workflow this... is is really like the tree of the program. So yeah, there's... this is the, the actual program. So if yeah. you change the tree, you are changing the program, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so and you can organize some things that doesn't change the the program, but maybe they are going to change. All things are yeah. declared. Or yeah. our things are initialized, uh, yeah. but when you yeah. change, uh, so so in a way, 
so for one problem there 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 can be more than than one visual representation of course because that yeah. happens also with with being, you can have like one binary that is produced the same but you can have like two different uh, text yeah. codes that produce the same binary uh, but seldom when you are reorganize the, the the your your code you are changing your binary and that's one of the things that right yeah, in, yeah. Sorry, in here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and the reason so for here what I see that is very useful about uh, the visual aspect of bonsai what for me is more important is the representation of these different data sources because one thing that is hard to think about in text is about time and about things that are running in parallel because text is a sequence of things so you are going to think about it in a linear way if you are reading the text. You can think about it in a parallel way, but then you have to you have to think about it in an abstract way. You have to think about oh now I'm creating a a, a thread that's going to run in parallel. So you have to keep thinking about that yeah, you while you write things. another and part of your program. Here you have like a visualization of how it will look. So yeah, it's much better yeah. for debugging mentally while what's going on with your code. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. the and but but the point is then to have it in a way that. The, the visual aspect doesn't dominate. And this was one, one design component of Bonsai that I think was very important for me, making uh, even early on, is to have the layout is automatically generated. And there is a, you just really just put the, the functions that you want in here and you don't have to worry about placement. Uh, things will be placed where they should and there's a meaning to them. We didn't discuss much about combining stuff, but uh, for example, Joan talked about this combine latest things like that. Uh, so when you combine two nodes, um, for example, you get an output which is the the, the number and an image. Okay, in this case, uh, the order. So this is the number is item one and the image is item two, in the combination. And why is that? Because the the inputs the the order of the inputs is from top to bottom. bottom so this is yeah. one and two. You can flip them. And then the the image will be uh, item one and the number item two. So, okay. so this is really just the visual component is really just a a representation of your program. You're really just writing code, um, and the you can even look at the code. It's actually quite linearly. Um, we've, we've been modifying it. Uh, Say as as of one year ago, we changed it so it uh, actually version controls well in Git. So you can actually ver you do you can do version control of a of a of a bonsai workflow. Um, and uh, this is all open source. I don't think we stress that enough. So yes, it's free just... open source, MIT yeah. licensed. Yeah, no strings everything. attached. Uh, you special to... question yeah. on the chat: Can you make custom icons for your own nodes? I guess yes, you can. Yes. So this is actually this, so all of this are actually um, rendered. In the editor with a SVG rendered, so it, your 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 nodes are just SVG icons. So, for example, um, I had this. Uh, um, we have a my it's transform, not, right? So, yeah, it's not there so anymore. Do, do, but... So this node my transform that we have here. Mm -hmm. So, for example, what we can do. So I'm going to go to. Um, let's go to. Let's go to, so if you go to, uh, the best way to get examples, if you go to um, the Bonsai uh, organization there, if you look for icons, so you're going to have the Bonsai icons. So these are the icons that are kind of built in. So you can take like um, one of them, let's say, for example, the division. So I'm going to download this icon. Okay, this is the vision icon. Okay. So if I download it, uh, save it as my stuff. I'm just going to download it here. And then if I copy this file to my extensions, OK, and you give it, for example, the same name, transform. So you give it the same name. So now if I reload it, it should this work. So now, where's my transform? Uh, oh, no, it didn't. Bug. Okay. It should have done that. 
Are you sure you put it on the right directory? I yeah, think so, yeah. 2020? It should have worked, I think. But you can, actually. It's just a matter of figuring out what the hell is wrong with this. Maybe but, it's uh, in cash. You can, you can absolutely <laughs> do that. You can, you can absolutely uh, do that. Maybe it's reworld. Can you reworld? Can you I think I reload it. Oh, maybe... maybe uh, no, but I reload it. Have you tried turning maybe, it off and on again? I will, I will try it, but I don't think it's that, actually. I think it will be... I think it'll be the same. Name space. Uh, live, uh, live debugging. <laughs> no worries. Whatever. It's nope. um. Nope. It's a I bug. Can do, okay. I, I can do another thing actually. Yeah. You, you can can't the even bug. do your custom icon. Ah, oh, such a lame program. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so let, let let me do it in another way just to show that you can at least change something. So I'm gonna call this my transform <laughs> also. And if it's um, in a group, it's easier. So you can also, yeah, with a group should also work. Yeah, you see now it's, there's a icon. Okay. So this icon already is picking it up from the the file that is there, and then we mm -hmm. could modify it. So if I go here, I'll figure out why it's not working for the the CS the script. Okay. I think there's a reason for that. How, how recent? Uh, how recent is the script thingy directly on on bonsai? Like. When so, ago did you implement it? If we change it, it was last year, two years. Uh, it's Another like already? two years, yeah. So now this, yeah, you have the okay. three little nodes. So yeah, so you can edit, you can make your own node in uh, in Inkscape. Um, and I'm completely sure there's a way to load. Oh, I I know what's going on. Sorry, I I think I remembered how we actually get the other node. Okay. So I think the. It has to be done. The name is slightly different. I think you have to call it extensions. Yeah. I think it's there's a name. This this does work. I'm absolutely sure. But I I may not know the name of it now. Extensions. I think it's name space console. I think it's, it's the name space. space. It's the name space. But I think extensions extensions. There's but definitely. You can also try extensions, extensions, extensions. I just extensions. don't know how. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Okay. I don't remember. I re I rarely do this. Yeah. This is, this is, is, you is can, this you can documented often... somewhere? Could we RTFM <laughs> and figure exactly. out what name yeah. it's supposed to have? <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Okay. Because there's a whole way of like customizing these icons by family by. Name yeah, there, price, yeah, price, yeah, you can. Yeah. There's, there, there's too many, another, too many options. Another. Too many options. Too, too many, many options. options but, yeah. it's, uh, but it's it's definitely yeah. doable. Oh, actually, maybe no. I'm not gonna say. It's just extensions. No. Never mind. No, 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 no. no I'm not gonna say no, anything. Not... There's a way to do okay. it. I just, I'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, yeah. One last later. challenge oh, that join, I have um, for you. One, one thing I will say. The last thing. Okay. If you're curious about uh, asking questions and things that are not in the documentation, the help menu is actually useful. So if you go to Documentation, bonsai forums, and report the bug. If you go to bonsai forums, then you can actually go to um, basically a Google group where there's like a lot of questions about how to use bonsai. Most of them, if you go into this community, you'll find a lot of neuroscientists because that's mostly with the people who use bonsai so far. But don't be intimidated by that. You can also learn a lot about neuroscience just from reading the forums. Uh, but you can <laughs> like, look look um, about for things like Arduino, and then you can kind of, um, uh, I don't know, what is the most compatible analog acquisition device for bonsai? Or I came Arduino. to learn bonsai, and I ended up knowing everything about neuroscience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can <laughs> definitely look for neurons. Uh, fiber photometry and MCA combined, infrared LEDs, fiber photometry. I always wanted to know about fiber photography and MCA combined. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so there's lots of interesting things to learn here. But yeah, so the forums are actually a good way to kind of get started um, because there's a lot of um, the documentation still needs to be developed quite a lot. That's one area that is still not great. But the forums are a huge uh, source of help that can, uh, yeah. There's also a Discord channel, but it's, yeah, it's, all of it is in the. Discord website. is all the new hype, man. Everyone has one. So no, no, yeah, we, there, there's doing one. it the right yeah, way. Have, there's one. There's a bonsai Discord channel. It's just in here. Okay. Can you give me the, oh, the the invite link? I think. So I can. Uh, put it yes, on the, I can the invite you. Here. I can invite you. So invite people. Is that it? Okay. I'm gonna show can my webcam you? right now because we're gonna do some some. Oh, I can't show my webcam because I'm on my my or webcam just... is on Discord. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you guys are gonna see it. Discord. Thanks.
I can copy okay. the link or I can send it to you. I don't know. <laughs> Up to you. <laughs> it's, I'll send you an invite and then you can share or what is the best way? Yeah, I'll put it on the chat there. On the chat on the... On the on uh, Discord. Anyways, I wanted to have a challenge for you, which is to import this shader toy that I just posted on the chat. Okay, where this is on <laughs> Frown's chat. On on for zones on for zones. Uh, okay, so I'll put the link to Discord okay. and the shader I'm gonna toy. I'm going to join both Discord. So shader toy, what is this? this is, I have no idea what's going on. Let's this is see. the invitation for our event. And uh, your challenge, if you would like to accept it, is to make this code run in Bonsai. Okay, I'll give it a try. Well, just to see, first of all, I just need to see if it compiles, actually. It's the only thing, because I don't know, I have no idea what else they have in there. This is the shader code. First question is, does it compile? If it, uh, so is well, it? Of course it so compiles. It? It's running on shader toy. Of course, of course. No, but I mean, in the, this is supposed to be a, Fragment shader, yeah. So there's a fragment color, there's a frag chord. Sounds reasonable. <laughs> Famous last words. Okay. Yeah. Specified so let's shader assume type. it's a fragment shader. So let's say toy shader. Um, let's see what happens. I run it. Okay, so undefined variable i time. So yeah, so these are the built in. So variables I that they have on shader toy by built, built into shader toy. So what you have to do is you'd have to declare them in bonsai. So you'd have to say like uh, things like um, uniform, uniform float i time, I time. And, and uniform I and I don't know what it is the other thing. I think it's now we have i resolution. What is this? I think it's a it's it's a vec two with a resolution vec for two. x oh, and yeah. y. Yeah. So let's do that. So uniform float a uh, vec two. Sorry, i resolution. Is that happy with that? All right, they compiled. That's good news. Okay. So now, now we need, need two to things. We need, to, we need to update. So we need to update it. So um, first thing we need to do is you need to update the. Um, so we're gonna need to update the. the th so okay, let me comment this stuff. Uh, and we need to update the i time and i resolution, right? So mm -hmm. uh, i time. What is it? Is it a cumulative time or a relative time? Because I have a it's, time step, it, you can it, do. It, it's is it cumulative? cumulative? Yeah. Yeah. So let's accumulate. The so let's time accumulate since, elapsed the time, time can, since that. it started. Yeah. So let's accumulate. So we need to convert it to a float. So, um, uh, so t. So, so let's pass it on to. It's, so let me change my seconds. shader. Beware of that. So let me change the shader to the shader toy. We don't need the bindings now, so I'm going to remove them. Uh, and we're going to set the effect to be this, this is the eye time. And we need the resolution as well. So the resolution we can get from the window. Yeah. So we can get the X and Y. Get the window. Or and height. We can get the. Uh, yeah, I guess with the X and Y, yeah. So let's get the... There's a no white white and height. X and y is a... probably where you where you have your mouse cursor, I guess. Oh yeah, so yeah, we just we just want the resolution width and height. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. So let's get the Yeah, actually I can just um I'm gonna write an expression because it may it wants a web vector too. So what I'm gonna do is um I'm gonna write another one, transition transform, which I'm going to do to um, I want to do the casting, so I want to cast the width and the height. I'm casting two things at the same time, and then just so I can convert them to float. And then, um, sorry, I'm just being fast now. I'm not sure if the VEC2 is float or int, actually, but I think it's float. float it's float, I think it's float. It's pretty much float. So you can just do eye resolution. So the question is now is will this run? I have no idea. No program defined. So why is that? So the program is not defined. Well, it definitely it looked like it was defined. So what we can do, I think this is very it's just details, right? So if I open my effect frag, main has to be, I think this is just really this. Uh, maybe the version needs to be declared on no. the shader. That also so, probably, but I think this is going to be. Oh, main is not defined, so this has to be called main, by the way, not ah, main image, but main. main, main and image. and uh, let's get rid of this. 
and text chord and frac chord color I like that and I think this is going to be enough we need a out confused with non varying frac color and if a variable frac chord oh that yeah. was the frac uh, coordinates come from the vertex shader supposedly yeah no, no, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, sorry sorry this is just uh, the names are wrong well not wrong but just the names i gave them mm -hmm. out can be used in non varying frac color where is the frac color equals void main it's only used in the in the beginning of the main the frag chord we just received the frag chord to reset the the, oh, maybe. Wait, the origin let me just make sure yeah put them on top it's cleaner out can't use non-varying frac color i think this is just a naming thing out vec for frac color this is correct in vec to doesn't make any sense People in the chat are trying to help, just saying yes, the out okay. at the end, no, that, that doesn't really help. <laughs> this should work. Am I did I miss a brackets a braces somewhere? This is really strange because I mean I wasn't necessarily expecting this to work, but it's just frustrating because it looks like it try to do like a, an empty output just doing the frag color out and see if that works. Well, this is the easiest one, right? So, because here we have the out vec for frac color, which mm -hmm. is written very nicely, but for some reason on this guy, which is the names are the names are just correct. Yeah, uh, uh, copy the four. version number that might influence the definition. Let's do that. Yeah, let, let's do. That's a good point. Let's just do that. Let's just declare the version number properly, and that was it. Great. Uh -huh. <laughs> I had the same issue when I was trying to put shader toy shaders right. into WebGL stuff. I had to include the version. So, all right. So okay. So it compiled and it's not supposed right. to go black. That well, might be the it, no, 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 well the, the frac it's, cards. It's names. It's names. It's totally fine. It's a text chord. Yeah. Yeah. So now yes. this is just the last rename. We need to do a find and replace on this. So we need to change this to text chord. Uh, and now deal with the mistakes. Which is just one actually on in here. So text chord. Yep. Yep. Okay. So and now it doesn't work. Black screen. <laughs> well, let's make sure that the, the what's going on. The time here, should be in seconds, time? not milliseconds. Time is in seconds. Oh, is it milliseconds? Uh, no, it's 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 in date. It's not in seconds. You're giving a date. Oh no no! This is just the x-axis. No, the the value is is um. Sorry, I can show it in text. So this is just in seconds. Okay, so that seems correct. So this is in seconds, and then this one is just the resolution. It also seems correct. Uh, so what else could it be that is not? Is there like an intermediate step? So let's try to run a something intermediate because it could be. Yeah. So let's, let's try to put step. like a color output. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do the following. I'm going to commentate that. Let's make, a copy, let's make a copy of this on a different file. Um, creator. And and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, uh, main. There it is. There. Yeah. So I'm just gonna yeah. write UV in here. <laughs> yeah. See if that that's doing something. That should do something, right? Because there may there might be something else that we are doing wrong. Oh, uh, crashed. No. Oh, I time. Oh, because now it uh, the variables have been optimized away. So this one doesn't exist anymore. Okay, so it's not showing anything. So this is means that probably we did. Let me see what we did here. We might have weird things. Um, we didn't do anything. Not doing anything it's... weird. Try to output uh, just a color. The resolution can maybe be weird. So let's try just text chord as we were doing before. Yeah. Um, and this we comment. So this is just a basic thing with this commented. It might be that the okay. resolution comes from All right. like so this, normalized. This, this, this is correct. Of, oh, uh, is it, it? Could it be? Ah, maybe it's. Um, maybe the resolution is just aspect ratio kind of thing. 
not uh, it... not the actual value. Oh, it's the aspect. Oh, okay, 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 okay. You can be that. Okay, we can do the aspect ratio. It's fine. So let's do the let's send the aspect ratio. Maybe that helps. So if we do that. Our resolution was not found. Why? I'm using it now. Did I save it? No. Uh, no, you are not using it on the on oh, oh, final oh, no, output. No, no, so. no, no. Sorry, because as aspect ratio is just a float, right? So it's just it's not correct. So it needs to be maybe it's normalized. Is that it? Maybe it's like yeah. A, I think it might be normalized. Okay. So resolution, but why would it be normalized? It's a bit weird. What do they want actually? Our resolution. They just use it here. So this is it's, to it's, do it's, what? Two it's trying times to convert. It's trying to convert into. No, um, no, no. Gonzo, Gonzo, you are uh, not using UV. You are not using the UV, so it's going. It's optimizing it that's, away. That's a very good point. Very good point. Mm. But I, but I still think it's not going to work because this is a, a, it's yeah. a vector two, right? Um, so I don't know what it wants. That's I think why... it's supposed that's that code in in there is to change the normalization stuff. So instead of the point being on the bottom left, it's on the center, the zero zero. That's mo usually what UV does because UV should be between minus uh, zero and one instead of minus one and one, or it should be minus one to one. Minus one to one. Okay, so we can just do that by hand for now. You can so, just okay, give so it like text squared, I think, and it will just work uh, fine. Okay. Okay, so let's just do it by hand. Resolution thing, yeah. So let's if we if we just do that. So let's try uh, minus our resolution. We can just do just two give times it text minus one minus one done. Okay. Just give it text chord. Should work. Do what? Your text chord. Your text chord is already normalized between minus one and one. So it should uh, just between work. Between ah, zero, between zero and one. No, between zero and one actually. Okay, but it's, so uh, but it's okay. Yeah, I think this will work. Um, should so have something on screen. This. Should have something on screen. So this is saved. It compiles. Yes. Saved. Come on. Come on. There we yes. go. Yes. <laughs> now we have Inertia running on Pawn side. That's what matters. Works. Yeah, so Ship besides, it. So it's normalization of Cognite, right? <laughs> it's they, just, they are I mean, so, so this is the, other, yeah. the only thing. So Shader Toy, in a way similar to Bonsai, they have to solve the binding problem. Um, in some yeah. way, they they are defining like predefined variables that have some meaning, uh, and so the challenge will be to map these variables in a way that is reasonable to the bonsai environment. And usually, it ends up being this: you have to define the the proper uniforms, uh, make sure that everything compiles, and make sure that you the values you are sending in make sense. And but there's no reason that it shouldn't work. So. You should you should save this as the shader toy importer example for for bonsai. It's also a good point, yeah. Because I guess I mean, well, well we have it's then by you. It was done by you. It was done by all of us apparently. <laughs> no, this one. No, no, this, but I, this, I demo. this is not the inertia demo party. This is the yeah. This is the invitation for our inertia. It wasn't made just by me. It was mostly made by Alien Zero One with the original okay. code being by Flopine, and I did some parts in it, but very little stuff. So mostly it's right. by Alien, and it's he's on the nice. chat and okay. he's like, "Woohoo!" Actually, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, nice work. Really nice. Okay, I think that's it. Unless anyone has any other questions for our for our guests here today, thank you very much for this presentation. It was really great to see the update on Bonsai. I already knew the tool a little bit, but it's great to see how it's been evolving throughout uh, throughout the last year. That I haven't been as much in touch with it as as before, and we can do a lot of graphical stuff with it, which is excellent. And uh, not many people realize the the full potential that. Uh, that this has so thank you so much for for this uh no, chat worries. thanks for inviting I don't know if you guys want to add anything anything that you thought was like missing that is also interesting to check out everybody talked about the community part there's lots of stuff i didn't talk about there's just so much it's <laughs> impossible i don't even want to try because if i if i say anything it will open a huge can of worms <laughs> uh, of things that uh, that is uh yeah the best way is to just ask because we've, we've done so many things with it, from parties to so, it's not for uh, science. That's the only thing I want to say. Yeah, for Zama, it's so been a lot. Asking, of stuff. No, no, we have something that we can say now. So we are 
we are uh, working for contributors to, to ah that's uh, a good point yes if uh, can, can, I, can i can i use this as a, a yeah, yeah, yeah. go for it but i'm i'm hiring for if anybody wants to work on bonsai then i'm hiring so i can they can apply uh go to neurogears.org so i'll show okay i'll do my sh shameless plug i guess go for and it and say uh so if you just go to what kind of work is it? Is it remote? We have to move to London. You can, you, you can move to you can do whatever you want. You can be in London or Portugal or remote, uh, but we have to just speak about it. Um, but if you go to neurogears.org, so that's my my company that works at the edge of the neuroscience, uh, interaction, robotics, and we do a bit of everything from um, yeah building custom instruments for scientists to building exhibitions, uh, to building, giving workshops about how to build computers. And um, yeah, so there's a bunch of things that you can look. Um, and if you want to join us, so we're looking for uh, both research software engineer and uh, software engineer experiments. So if you just want, so there's different levels of things. You can go through this and, uh, yeah, if you want to send me an email, so the the at the end there's a link of the little email icon. You click there. It's like the I'll give you the test. The test is there's no there's no explicit link button to apply, but it's actually it's a test. It's actually just below. Just click on the button. Yeah. You anyway. should be able to find it. If you can't find my email address on my webpage, yeah, yeah. I don't think I want you working for me. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, anyway. I'll give it a, yeah. So yeah, so that's uh, that's the plug. Um, all right. Yeah, feel free to drop me off. You want to join in this kind of crazy bonsai thing? Yeah. So yeah. Um, so there are several projects that we. There are several we, projects. Yeah. Uh, it involves uh, a lot of things. Uh, yeah. We do, there's so much. There's like hardware integration. We're working on crazy setups. Like uh, so, we mentioned like the photometry stuff, right? So this is like mm -hmm. a a custom photometry system that I'm integrating like uh, right now. Mm -hmm. uh, for, so, with yeah. so there's always there's hardware to integrate. There's lots of there's hardware to work integrate. To, yeah, there's work to do on the graphical user interface, interface yeah. or yeah. Uh, in code generation or yeah, teaching uh, and just playing around and learning the like language. Maintaining some libraries, so we have like this uh, the shader library to maintain. Um, yeah, the open CV. Open CV wrappers, yeah. uh, physics Open wrappers, like physics simulator, yeah. just like a bunch of stuff that uh, I've been doing so for the last eight it's years. So many and stuff that I think uh, it's like it depends a lot on the candidate and and what you. Yeah, want there, there's to... lots of stuff to do. So if yeah, if you, if you if you feel there might be something, but you don't know if it's appropriate, you should just send an Ask. email. Yeah, and just yeah. Uh, we can probably fit you somewhere. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for the seminar. It was really cool to see the, the whole thing. Uh, thank you both, Gonzalo and Frazão, for, for joining us. And mm -hmm. uh, as for the rest of the people on Inertia, tomorrow I think we have a demo show and then we have another seminar on Saturday for doing stuff for the Nintendo DS. So if you want to know how to do programming stuff for the Nintendo DS, Porosion is going to give us a seminar. I hope I'm I'm doing this. I'm, I'm saying the right dates. Let me check real quick uh yes indeed so yeah tomorrow we have a uh, probably demo show of chaos constructions not sure yet if it's chaos constructions or another party but yeah that's what we have anyways registrations are open for submitting your um your entries for the competitions competitions will be on the 3rd of october i'm saying this more for frazan than than for the other people and and gonzalo as well if you want to submit something for inertia demo <laughs> party you're free you're free to do an entry you can do it on bonsai we have a lot of different competitions so feel free to go crazy okay. So, uh, yeah, don't forget to register, get your vote key, all that jazz, submit some entries. Let's make Inercia Demo Party great again, as uh, in the great words of Mr. Donald Trump. Anyways, that's it for today. Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Bye.